Alright. Oh, live streams, live streams are fake. <laughs> Thanks, Knight. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Alright. Well, welcome back, everyone, to our next session of Here Be Dragons. <laughs> Myself, once again, being your GM, and asking one of our fine players if they would like to give a session recap. Oh lord, who wants to? I e who like watched the video? Stick you with it. Oh, I got hey, I actually did watch it. I I watched it. I did it last time. Wreck, you, you take far time? too long. Uh, I do <laughs> not. I take like three <laughs> minutes tops. It took you ten minutes last time. No, no, Roof, seven. Do you want to do it? I don't mind doing it. Okay, you can go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll cover it next week. Okay. So I have no idea that you guys can hear me because my circle is just broken for me. We, I, I can hear you. All right, because I we can hear you. Yes, yes we can okay, hear you. Good, good, good. good, good. All right. That was my biggest, one of the biggest note blocks was last session. Okay. So we can begin with, uh, she was finally woke up by Lesla, which I didn't pay attention to today. Hmm. Um, at which point she is looking around with uh, all the shinies and the uh, uh, she is drunk in mind. Uh, grab the table leg, believing it to be some weird plant creature. Uh, and had to learn about the economy. And uh, if you want something, you sometimes have to pay for it. And you can't just take whatever you want. Because this is fake news. Is Everything stupid. is free. Yeah. Everything is free. Um, Heidi. Then, uh, we cut over to Inic, who was just doing Inic things when he was interrupted uh, by one of his uh, retainers, who are always relevant. And I definitely need to They're more characters than I am, really. <laughs> and um, yeah, he end up, ends up me ends up there's a commotion. He goes out. He's a man just trying to get a drink with a giant creature of some kind on his shoulder. And it buys him a drink to bail in the place and there's another place, which is a lot less pleasant. I have a couple of drinks to chat and it is through rock rhythm and mystical form. Uh he is offered the job for the members of the mithril scale. Which is our adventuring group. We don't think we ever stated the name of our adventuring group. Um, do, do, do. The rest of the group eventually met there, except for Corvus, who ended up going to do a prayer to the god of the Shabba. And <laughs> looking for a cat before noticing a gentleman following him into an at the same alley, uh, which became the room he did the prayer in, which the god of Bizarre, the uh, red worm, and a god of eternal life, or everlasting life, which was just a lovely thing. After a conversation on ideas and de demonstrating that neither man is a fool, um, we went their separate ways. Uh, now, having learned about the job, the group has decided, sure, let's do that, and then Margaret came up and was like, yeah, uh, guys, uh, gods give you money, lots of money. Uh, we all decided, well, the only thing to do with money is to spend it. Uh, so, through persuading, uh, Inic, Lesla, and Cheese combined their funds to go get some armor for Inic, which Lesla argue argued to help with the, the Dwarven Smith. Um, successfully getting a 20, do 20 gold discount, uh, whereas Corvus went to, oh, in exchange that she worked to build it as well, she just like, helped him for the next couple of days. Uh, well, Corvus went to go buy a knife, uh, found a couple of knives from none of his liking, found a throwing knife, was to his liking, found a book on deciphering languages, which was also to his liking, got a 10 gold discount to, via the, probably the worst argument in the, in the history of D&D, &D. but nonetheless. And then some just a uh, little bit of extra, because I think at, after we ended, we agreed that we all took a long rest, if I remember correctly. 
Yes. Yes. So we all have uh, taken a long rest since the last session. Corvus did keep his promise. Um, we're probably not going to do any uh, business, so we know we'll be here for a full day. And yes, Captain Graffs, Corvus did buy a room in an inn. Did not sleep on the street again. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we just leave that to where we are now. Yeah, so, uh, are we just okay. doing our own thing until Lesla's done helping with the forge, or? <laughs> no, 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 no. We have another day and a half to fight. You ate it at around midday <laughs> yesterday. Please, sir, please. <clears throat> He was still holding uh, yeah. onto that table leg for dear life. I mean, yeah, <laughs> she's still carrying that thing. Alright, uh, let's get right into it with a lot of you, all of you waking up this morning. I know what some of you are doing. I know where Lesla's going. Yes. What about the rest of you? If Sapphire's, if Sapphire can get away with this, she's going to try and sleep in. Yeah, because there's be no plan in here. Uh. Yeah, she'll be able to get away with that. The question is, does Lesla take keys with her? This is indeed the question. <sighs> what does, does what does Lesla get, do? Does cheese get brought along, or does uh? Does Cheese get left in the care of Enik? Cheese will be brought along. Lesla okay. does not like it when uncertain things could happen to what belongs to her. Fucking slave owner, I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cheese, cheese goes with Lesla. She's wait, still... Like did, I, did I dream last night? Because I did... How did you get the fuck out of my bathroom? <laughs> Yeah. Not especially, no. Okay. What Sorry, a dream to have. Get the fuck out of my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, really I, gu I guess <laughs> cheese really <laughs> is high. high cheese at work. Yeah, I guess it's really high cheese. She thinks there's a dog in the bathroom. We don't own a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and the person uh, that owns right. something dog-like isn't even sharing an in with you guys. What about uh, Enik? What are you doing this morning? Um... Enik doesn't have armor. Correct. I don't have armor. Um, he has natural dragonborn scales. <laughs> sure, not harder than the steel I'm used to being encased in, but sure. Um, I don't know, chilling? Not much I can do without my armor, really. What does, what does chilling entail for Enik? Yes, this is a very important Sitting question. Sitting in his room, obsessively making sure everything is perfectly level. <laughs> I wouldn't call that chilling, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying cheese is high. He has nothing else to do. Normally he has other things to do and he can distract himself. The floorboards won't level. You don't understand. The floorboards. <laughs> it gets a sanding paper out. <laughs> I will be this whole, this whole hotel will be exact fit as bad when I die my bed. <laughs> Alright, what what about Corvus? What is Corvus going to do? Is he looking for oh, that no. damn cat? This is an efficient. Uh, so Corvus does, uh, waking up, waking up, uh, I'm guessing nothing is still- From ash and dust? This is literally cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cannibalism. Uh, what? Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, did, was I robbed in the night yesterday? No. Okay, good, good, good. Where we invest in modest uh, lodging. Uh, so he does a little bit of a morning, morning work, morning, you know, morning meditation, morning workout. Uh, think he's go check his check his traps, remember where he is. Uh, <coughs> decides to just have a, a quick a quick meal. He still has the room for a couple hours where he can pay for a, it for the another day. And then. Because just how he is, he 
he is going to because it's something to do and it's like he's basically kind of went this has gone from a side job to like I've got a little bit uh, him and his drake are going to go scouring the city for the fucking cat find the fucking cat yes because it's like at this point it has become a very good investment to find this cat I need gold and that's the that's like easy <laughs> gold I just gotta find it <laughs> You know what's going to be really funny? When High Cheese finds it. I will murder <laughs> Cheese if she finds it. <laughs> anyway. I was I was going to ask, how close of an eye is Leslie keeping on Cheese while she's working? Good chain to avoid that close of My passive perception is an 11. The answer is not very. <laughs> Clouth is watching. Really noted. Oh, Clouth would uh, be watching you. The question yeah. is, does Clouth care enough to... Uh, alert you. I would hope he does. Well, let's roll a dice and find out. <clears throat> uh, yeah, she's, she's just gonna try she, she, she probably sees something and uh, wanders. Uh, yeah, she's, she probably sees something and she's just gonna go after it. And this is a stealth check. Do I have any disadvantage on this? Or... Yes, you will have disadvantage on this. Okay. I figured, because I'm still technically poisoned. Yes. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Only the one check. Okay. Uh, everyone knows where cheese is. Yeah. She's, like, trying to sneak out of there... the armor, and no. you just hear clang, 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 as she, like, bumps it to a bunch of armor. Yeah, um... Le uh, Lesla, as she's still working, just, um, snaps her fingers, and the mage hand uh, the invisible mage hand shows up and just grabs Cheese's tail to hold her there. Well, that's not fair. The uh, dwarven smith looks up. Can you keep your pet in check? <laughs> Jesus. He's not a pet, and then she pets her table leg. <laughs> Which point? Uh, Lesla says, yeah. Is Art. Cheese, if you would please sit down and have a nice, pleasant conversation with the houseplant. The, uh, the, the small little cactus that the dwarven thing has dances in front of you. <laughs> it's doing it's doing the mambo. Jesus. She's gonna bop her head along with it. Mm -hmm. Jeez, I'm sorry, what did you say, Miss Silver, sir? And thus Cheese was distracted for the next five hours. Anyway, <laughs> pretty much. Lesla, I want you to roll me just a couple checks to see how this turns out. All right. I'm going just to roll me two checks. All right. I'm going to assume smithing. Yes, it would be with your smithing tools. Ugh. That's not good. <laughs> That's not a good sound. Not horrible. It's not horrible, but it's not great. That's even worse. It is, yeah. I that is. I mean, technically speaking, it is above average for the normal person. Mm -hmm. But still, so I need to roll two for the dwarf, and let's we'll see what he gets. It'd be mm. really fun if you rolled less. Hmm. I feel like it's mixed. All right. Well, we'll get back to that. Uh oh. Oh no! <laughs> I can't see oh. what he rolled. Yeah, Corvus, you're uh, you're getting into uh, where are you going to look for this cat? Uh, well, I know it lives in a certain district, so I'm in there. Fuck. Okay. Yes, I know. That's <laughs> what you should do. You would, like I'm a hunter. I understand that things have terrain, and there is a rule with cats; they don't go a certain distance away from their house. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an investigation check. Investigation? Can I use perception? <laughs> Not this time. If you want, I will okay. let you use survival. Thank you. Thank you. That's better than perception. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my, technically my... tracking it. Yeah, can my Drake help me or no? Yes. Roll with advantage. 
I shouldn't be happy because I was going a little b bit below. Yeah. Okay. Yay! That is my enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. It's because I'm dedicating hunting. myself. It's not just like looking around. It's like I'm actually fucking hunting. So, you're going to go looking for this cat. You have the the Gerald description. It is somewhere about this area in the city. I'm pinging in on the map. Wait, go You're on the you all... layer. It's not showing me. That's, that would be why. That would be why it's not showing. Yes, I am. You're welcome. This area. Ah. Uh, Ooh, right there. Ah, uh, this is easy. Let's just take a look. Yeah, up towards that general area of the sea ward. Yeah. You've. You've made your way. You you found out where it's where it's hiding. Now you have to find it and catch it. This is where you think it's hiding. But you start to make your your search around. You discover something. This is the sea ward. There are a lot of cats. <laughs> oh god. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> He will take all those cats to that one lady. There are surprising very few of them that have collars. Right, let's go to that Dara edition. And also a very surprising few of them that are actually on, on ground level. Most of them are climbing through the rooftops or some other place that is generally out of reach. How you want to go about this is up to you. Alright, I'll down. Okay, so once you clear out the ground level, you know, make less work for yourself. Um, so I'll check the ground level first. Okay. Alright, so what are you... How are you checking the ground level? I, th I think this is an important question as to how you're well, going about doing so. I imagine there's a picture of the cat in the adventure. There is a picture of the cat, yes. So Corvus is really like, he's like, really like, okay, this is what it looks like. This is roughly how fat it is. Based on how long it's been away, it's either slightly fat or less fat. Uh, this fucking has, has distinctive, a distinctive marking on it. It's got a distinctive mark. Like uh, to answer these questions, yes. Uh, yeah. It has a very distinctive part in that it's mostly a grayish sort of tiger stripe cat. However, one leg is like an orange tabby cat stripe. That's, Only that's one leg. Really good. Yep, that's a really good, like, strong, distinctive trait. So I can, that's going to be easy for us to stand for. Mm -hmm. So if. Knowing that this is the kit is the cat will not be hard. Yes. And on the ground level, you don't see this particular cat. Right. Also, as for is it a fat uh, cat? The answer is very. Okay. It's well, just it's some, rich, it's some rich lady's uh, precious baby. Yes, it is a very <laughs> obese. Yes. Cat. It is a wild uh, cat. I will also, on the ground level, look for like shaded spots, you know, places where, like, yeah, a cat would probably like hide under here as well. Uh, no, what it is is the cat's wearing a cat fat suit, so it can appear as fat, so it can hide, take all the snacks out of the house, and bring it to its stray friends. Oh. Ground level food is fruitless. I will make my way into the room. Okay, so you make your way onto the roofs looking for this cat. I'm not gonna make you roll athletics. You'll eventually find a way to get up there. I, I was like, yeah, there's, unless it's like super difficult, I don't really need to. No, I it's, imagine like there's ways to access. Yeah, this. no, there's you'll you're able to find some ladder for just some guys who are doing some work, but they're on break and they do not care enough to stop yeah. you from climbing it. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, I'm on the roof now. Alright. 
go ahead and roll me another survival check. Looking for this cat. Yeah. I could get my Drake. Uh, I doubt my Drake can figure out how ladders work. Yeah, no, he's not able to get so up there. No with help. So this will, yeah, uh, he will. Just put your Drake on your back. Problem solved. He, I can't carry him. Guys, he's too heavy. Okay. Oh my god, every time. Okay. I hate this cat. <laughs> no, I just want it. Why is it so wrong? So, Corvus. Yes. You climb up to the top of this ladder, and sitting there, right in front of you, staring directly at you, is something that, aside from how large it is, as this is a very lean, athletic cat, is the spitting image of what is on that poster. And it looks at you, very calmly stretches, and licks its paw, still keeping its eyes on you. And this is where Corvus reveals he knows speaks with animals. Oh yeah, it's just. <laughs> I reach into my uh, pocket. I pull out some uh, DLC I have, and I just kind of slide it over. The cat looks at the jerky. All right, the cat. Let's take these. <laughs> saunters. It, it it saunters over a few <laughs> feet. The mental Snips image. It. The mental image of this fat cat just sauntering. Well, keep in mind, this is a very lithe one. Yeah. This is, oh. That's the only difference. Picks it up, and then trots back a little further away from you, and with its eyes on you, begins gnawing on the jerky. Throw me a perception check. Oh, I know. It's actually a doppelganger. I was thinking also the cat had babies. Wrong. What is what this cat is cursed? This cat is a fucking cursed being. <laughs> oh, the cat. <laughs> the cat. Limbs come out the, from okay. behind it and it teleports you away. You don't notice anything. <laughs> you don't notice anything wrong about it. Is it the wrong leg? The the, the little the little orange leg. I mean, is that's the wrong a good leg. question. As far as uh, no, I will tell you, it is the same leg. This cat had fucking it's kittens. Falling around me at this point, or not? It doesn't seem to. It doesn't seem to care about you. That's good. That's good. Uh, I will shift a little bit closer. Not, not aggressively, just a little bit closer. Okay. It doesn't mind. Seem to mind you. Shift a little bit closer. It doesn't seem to care. It's just licking itself, but it's watching you. Well, I'll just keep shifting a little bit, a little, little shimmy, a little shimmy close every now and then. And then when I get to a certain, I'll just hold the hand out in like a sniff, a sniff, friend. It pauses mid lick, looks up at you, leans a little forward over, and gives your uh, your hand a lick, then goes back to looking at Okay, seemingly well, indifferent to you. Thing, I will, I'll go to stroke it. You stroke it, and uh, it bristles and leans into it. Aww. I have actually right. directs you to ask where to go it. behind the ear. Yeah, and then as I'm stroking, I just scoop my hand on its belly, and then gently as I can be, lift it up. I just hold oh, roll, it in my arms. Roll me an athletics or acrobatics check. Wouldn't this be animal yeah, handling? No. no. Why? Okay. Why Cat. So, you go to do that, and the cat, without no, missing a beat, twists, rolls over, jumps back about five feet, and then sits down and begins licking its paw again. I will repeat this. <laughs> so, no wonder right. why no one wanted one thing, to take this job. Roll me a perception thing, check. One, one thing Corvus has learned no one gives hunting is patience. And. Oh. Oh, oh, there we go. Corvus, Corvus, the cat smiles yeah. and winks at you. Oh, uh, it's a druid. Just folds it, like, sits and crosses his legs, crosses his arms, and goes, You know, I'm trying to actually do a job here. It smiles a little wider.
and it stops licking itself, stretches, and just lies down there and watches you. So can you speak, or you just... It begins scratching itself behind the ear. You know what would be really funny? Is if it's the druid that put up the, uh... The, the, the lost cat job, just so he can fuck with beginning adventurers. No. <laughs> it is still no. just looking directly at you. Yeah, no, he's like, he's just like, looking at it, he's like... Uh. It's just... You're clearly a very careful cat. I think Corbin's gonna wear druid this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know they have the ability to <laughs> end animals? You've encountered a few in your time in the forest, yeah. Not yeah, especially yeah, powerful yeah. ones, but you know it's something that they can do, or at the very least you've heard yeah, they like, can do. Oh, cool, a meal, and it turns into a guy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just a guy. Whoopsie doopsie. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's... Hunt. If nothing else, you have heard that that is something people can do. Yeah. Alright, I will begin to talk to this cat again. It is just grinning at you. I'm just stroking it. It, it. it seems to revel in you stroking it. And it, once again, does kind of like lean in to make sure you get the right spots. It's his internal monologue. And now I am talking to a cat that can smile and is clearly enjoying the fact that you messed with me. Why did I come into the city again? <laughs> <laughs> Just like ponders on that question for a while. He's like, look, magic fun. You can run away once, but uh, that lady really wants to get your her cat back. You understand that, right? The cat looks at you with uh, an expression you can best describe as really. Look, man, look, I'm just... It's like 15 gold now. The, uh, the cat's eyes actually seem to widen. When you say the uh, the price, look, it's like you know, like you, know, you probably wanted to be free. You probably wanted to, you know, you probably very smothering, probably, you know, smooshy. But if you want to be free, I mean, I don't mind. You seem intelligent. You can always. Uh, afterwards again. It just rolls over on the top of the roof and uh, scratches itself behind the ear. Yeah. Still just there. Yeah, it's just, it's just me and a cat just coexisting on the roof, contemplating existence. <laughs> like, Much what like corpses. Set of mistakes did I make? What set of mistakes brought me here? Uh. Uh. You want to go get some some fish or something? It's getting close to lunch. The cat, uh, yawns. And doesn't make eye contact. Oh, now you don't. It has eaten yeah. the jerky at this point. Yeah. I'm gonna just scoop him up, <laughs> I guess. 
athletics or acrobatics again. Just, just Come on, you can do it. You got Good this, work. Rex. Or yeah, no fucking words. Ruger. Why? Why? Ruger. Why? Why me? It has been why? a Monday. It has been a Monday. I forgot to clock in today. It oh, God. once again effortlessly just rolls out of your hand and scampers a few feet away before sitting down again. What? What is this game? Hey, come on. The groin mild frustration. Uh, but you know, to steady, the, steady themselves. I'm sorry, it's taking so long. I, I meant to be a cat hunt. I think it meant to be like a whole thing. Um, the cat uh, stands up and sort of walks over to like the the edge corner of the roof and just looks at you. I launch. <laughs> Yeah. Like a pouncing predator. <laughs> okay. I was about to say, how don't do it. Well, this this will be an acrobatics check, 100%. Yeah. Oh no. Carvis, no! Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> no! Uh, for a bit of insight behind the GM, so for for a bit of insight behind the GM screen, it rolled a nat 20. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way I could have won. The cat. Uh, uh, just simply sidesteps, like leans a little bit to the left, and you go careening past it. It inches from your face. It makes direct eye contact with you and gives you a wink as you go sailing off the roof. Yep. Go roll me an acrobatics check to see how hard you land. <laughs> Is Corvus ever going to enlist any help from his party members? Why would I? No, he's not going to. Uh, Corvus, you land very safely in a pile of refuse. A little bit worse for smell, but otherwise unharmed. Did he just Assassin's Creed into the trash? Yeah, he just Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Essentially, yes. I love the best part about this. We don't even call it the Swan Dive anymore. We just call it the Assassin's Creed. Yeah, pretty much. It's a leap of faith. As you're sitting in there contemplating what course of actions has led you up until this point and whether or not it was worth it, you hear something land softly next to you as the cat hops down, trots a little ways in front of you. And with a shake, a uh, shake of its tail, kicks over a box. The box falls over, and out plops a very, very fat cat that looks almost like <laughs> a spitting image of this. Man. You got the cat, Ruger. The uh, the slither cat, the lither cat, turns around, and looks at you. Uh, r walks behind a little cardboard box and walks out the other side it is now a jet black cat with very piercing blue eyes you know that might have been your god uh, <laughs> mm, she's a little more she's a little more cruel but yeah that might, you know. <laughs> that might have been your god fucking with you uh, uh, like, Tori just looks at this cat kind of so, like, it wasn't, there's not exasperation. Cole doesn't really get exasperated anymore. Uh, just kind of looks at it and just goes, goes. Are you? Are you like? Are you a cat? Or are you just like a other creature? No, I'm much more entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Like a fey thing? <laughs> no. If she was a fey, she would ask for your name. <laughs> uh, well, so thank you for the assistance. No, oh, don't thank me. You gave me a lot of fun today. Oh, come and see me sometime. Believe me, head it's back. Like you'll, know, you'll know where the place is. I promise you. Right. You have a good day, man. 
when you get there, ask for Calico. Turns around and hops out of the refuse pile and scampers off down the street. Calico? Calico. 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 Spilled exactly how you think. That magic cat thing. <laughs> magic cats. It's, I don't know anymore. Uh, and then I pick up little, little, I kind of like, I don't think, you know what, Cole just kind of does like a little dust off, but just a little bit. Scoops up the fat cat, tries to make, tries to make sure he doesn't touch any of the dirty parts of himself, and just kind of like. That is impossible. Yeah. And Cole's, especially for, especially because Cole is, is already filthy. I uh, picks it up and goes, you. Troublemaker, you know that? The cat looks up at you, meow. <laughs> I look to see if it's smiling. And hops in my hairball. <laughs> oh! Try oh, over the field. <laughs> Just throw it into the refuse pile. Uh, <laughs> oh, I walk, no. I walk, I walk to the hairball. house. The cat or the hairball, because that was not clear. No, the hairball. The hairball. <laughs> <laughs> the cat. <laughs> uh, but I will go to the listed address. So the listed address is a very, uh, very well-to-do mansion, which has a sort of large gate with a little bell for you to ring in front of it. Just, I just imagine Cole's just looking around like, I am the I'm the worst dressed person here and rings the bell. <laughs> There's a bit of silence before, um, after a moment, the door opens and a very well dressed uh, dragonborn in, uh, in fine clothes and a very stiff posture slowly steps out and very calmly walks up to the gate, looks you up and down, sees the cat. Ah, oh, someone finally found it. I take it you're here for your reward? Yes. Very well. Uh, one moment. Don't come inside, please. I'm Cat the Cat. Just so you know, I, 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 I decided the cat is just, I need comfort right now. And this cat, oh, cat, this the cat, cat long. The, the cat gags again. And the dragonborn grimaces, but uh, turns around and goes back inside. A few moments... After a few moments, he comes back out with a little bag of coins, uh, drops it into your hand through the gate, and uh, slightly opens the gate and holds his hands out waiting for the cat. I check the bag. Is it worth an amount? It's more. <laughs> Close it, hand over the cat. <laughs> he takes it back in. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, madam! Madam! He's begins walking back to the, uh... I'm lingering. Just Is the cat trying idea. to escape? No. <laughs> the cat doesn't seem to care. Uh, the cat's fat and happy. After, after a moment, it. the door opens, yeah. and you hear, uh excited, very shrill shriek that cracks the glass pane on the nearby window. Oh my god. The door closes behind him. Cole with his well-trained ears just ringing. <laughs> oh, the lady doesn't <laughs> yell a name. Ringing. <laughs> oh, but the name has been uh, 25 gold. Good for you. Now you gotta find Calico. I know. Holy <laughs> uh, was she in the sea ward? Did she say she was gonna be staying there, or...? Said, on your way back, you'll know the place. Alright. Uh, yeah. Like, I'll just take the drake and be like... Just like, again, like, just whispering to the drake the entire time, like... Literally, hunting the cat is more profitable than all my years of hunting. <laughs> oh. it, it, it leans over and gives you a lick. 
<laughs> Don't do that. I'm I'm covered in feces. It begins to lick you more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you get sick. It ain't my fault. But uh, let's let's detour from that. That's taken about. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, that's, no, that was fun. From... That's taken from the morning until about noon for this to happen, Corvus. Mm, that's know. half the day yeah. gone to you for to you uh trying to get this cat. Yeah. Twenty five gold out of it. Not bad. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Inic. You're that's polishing it. literally every inch of that room. Polishing it, leveling out the the dressers. Uh, eventually, one of your two retainers looks to you. Um, sir. Yes. Wouldn't it be better if you did something more productive? Like what? Anything? <laughs> Motherfucker just said get a job. <laughs> just kinda raises a non-existent eyebrow. Well, they're worried about not getting paid. You're not wrong. They don't get paid by me. In fact, they arguably don't get paid at all. You get paid? Like You're getting paid? An exposure. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, no, par it's part of your wealthy lifestyle. It's always been known to be the more vocal of the two. Just kind of... It will it, nod. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps I should be doing something better with my time. I don't imagine you'd like to spar. Um, no, sir, I'm not Well, you seem to be not doing nothing at all, either. I don't see an issue. Sir, I have already leveled the mirror three times. <laughs> That's great. I mean, if you if you think you're so so big and mighty as to Tell me what I what I should do, as someone above your station. Why not spar me? Why not see if you can actually fill those boots? Hmm? Yeah. I'm sure you would be better suited to finding someone who could actually pose you a challenge, sir. Like what? There is nothing to do in this town. I mean, you haven't really looked, sir. The only options I have are to take party contracts for the Adventuring Guild while out of armor. And even then, my charge is forced to work in a forge for the rest of the week that I cannot leave because I have a duty stay here only well, two days um perhaps it may be a good idea for you to look for supplies you are going to be making a journey aren't you oh i i just clicked on to roll 20 after clicking off to look at my sheet and see how much food i have and oh my god that ping was so loud why <laughs> Anyway, um, I have like multiple, I have like five days worth of rations. No, sorry, ten days worth of rations on me. I don't really know if I need much more. How, how far is the trip again? Two weeks. A week oh. there and a week back. We can get rations once we're in the town. Yeah, that, I, I don't. No, I don't it is really two weeks there. Uh, I thought it was a week. Oh, we no, it, this is going to be a month-long trip. Oh. I will be right back. I'm going to...
hole. Okay. Yeah, I guess I will go get supplies. But before I go, I'm going to tell him to... I'm going to break the fucking mirror he was leveling and then tell him to level it again. As you wish. He, pull, he pulls out of his uh, coat pocket a little strip of some kind of adhesive perhaps in primitive form of glue. This is not the first time this has happened. Nor will it be the last. Man should and, learn and his Inic, fucking place. And Enik just got seven years bad luck breaking a mirror. We'll see about that. Night's stu stupid. <laughs> how Not is, even Enik. Just how night. <laughs> is me being dumb have any effect on my luck? Because du uh, be being dumb increases your luck. Have you not played Fallout? No, being stupid, ju doing the stupidest possible thing has always increased my luck. That's just how it works. I don't question it. That's why I do dumb shit. So you've sacrificed your common sense to the dice gods. Got it. <laughs> I never offered it. They simply I'd... took it. <laughs> I think Harume offered it a long time ago. Anyway, so Nick, you're going out looking for supplies. Yep. I'm gonna go buy. I don't know, like a couple days worth of rations. Okay. So, um, are you gonna head to the market to there? Are you gonna stay in the area around the Avengers Go? Because there are some places that sell it there. Well, first things first. I am poor, so I am going to sell. Uh, both my hand axes. Okay. Let's see. Hand axes are how much gold? They're five apiece. Like five apiece? Okay. So you're looking to sell these hand axes? Yep. So around the Adventurer's Guild, you're not really going to get much of a decent price for them. There's a lot of people trying to sell that. A lot of people are like, I'm tired of throwing these things. It's not so much that, it's just that there are a lot of weapons here. But the market might give you a better, a uh, bit of a better price. Then I will go to the market, I guess. All right. So going to the market, uh, it's much busier today than it was the last time you went. There's quite a bit more people um, hustling and bustling around. What's going on in the background? What did I just hear? I believe someone I... said Neom. Yeah, Neom, like an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what that was. All right, moving on. Anyway, yeah. Like I said, there are a lot more people around. Uh, in addition, there is what seems to be a small gathering in front of a guy uh, on a pedestal. The gentleman in question is a. Uh, very impressive looking gold dragonborn and some very fine, very colorful robes. He appears to be giving a very impassioned speech, but you're a bit too far off to hear him from here. Otherwise, there are a few merchants that dabble in various knickknacks. And uh, one very uh, bored-looking weapons merchant. It looks like he may be about to fall asleep. Slaps down hand axes. In front of the merchant? Yep. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, no, did you want to... Uh, you wanted to sell these? Yes. Uh, he looks over it. Then, decent in good condition. 
I can give you two gold apiece. They're worth more than that. I mean, they might be worth more than that to you, but I have to resell them now, don't I? And I have to make a profit. You have to resell weapons that were once in the hands of a noble family. That should be worth an upsale, should it not? Uh, what noble family are we talking about here? That can have a lot of sway on things. Family of Trothar. Never heard of them. Hmm. Not surprised. But, nobility is nobility nonetheless. They're of a higher craftsmanship than you would find from any common man with a hand axe. Maybe true, maybe not. From where I'm standing, they look just about as good as anything else I can find. And I've never heard of that family. I'm inclined to believe it may as well not exist. No offense. No one in Waterdeep's going to care. Does that not mean you can sell it as some exotic noble family's armory? There's something from some exotic noble family's armory if none of them know what my family is. Are you suggesting I embellish this a little bit? You are That's a not my style. But you're a merchant, is that not your job? Perhaps in some cases, but in this case, I have to mark it up as a collector's item. Any collector worth their salt's gonna have it appraised. And that's just gonna leave me out of luck now, ain't it? Four gold. I'll give you three. Three Each. and a half. Tell you what, three each, and I'll give you the flyer that that fellow over there points to the gold dragonborn and handed out to everyone they so much that he ran out of about two hours ago. You can go uh, pester him for something. Preaching Looks about so some draconic god, if you must know. Pretty pretty uh, too. Back. Fine. Good. I get to have another bother off my hands. He hands you the six gold and takes the two hand axes. Now please don't come back unless you're ready to buy something. Mm. I'm gonna read the flyer. <laughs> so the fly so the flyer says, join the Temple of Lendus. Reconstruction effort beginning soon. And has a picture of the face of this gold dragonborn on there. Uh, it's not drawn the best. You can tell it's not professional, but it's decent. Mm. Does it say where the Temple of Lendus is being rebuilt? It uh, does have a general location, which is more towards the, uh, uh, it would be down towards the south ward. So, pretty far from here, actually. Alright, I'll go there. Alright. So you're going to spend, it's going to be quite a while to get there. But Sorry. when you finally do arrive, what you see is a, it's honestly not a very large structure. It looks like it is a, it looks like this was someone's house, but that has recently burn, uh, been put to flame. And there are a good few armored dragonborn that are assembling the bricks. And making something that is clearly nicer than what used to stand there before, as well as clearing away the rubble and debris.
in that case, um, Inic will uh, will walk up to some of the the dragonborn just to make sure he's in the right place. He he asks, uh, "Is this the temple of Lendus that's supposed to be being rebuilt?" So you walk up to a black dragonborn who's clad in a very very fine set of full plate armor and uh, turns to you. Uh, emblazoned across his chest is the symbol of the Corpse of Remembrance. He gives you a look up and down. It is. It is. I can think of no finer place to build it. The this... town of scum and villainy. <laughs> You've been in Waterdeep for a while, I can tell. No, it really doesn't take much to see past the skin of the place. It's a place of civilized people that have been protected for far too long. And think very little of the outside world. Only a few of the nobles are halfway decent. And even they are pain to talk with. But still, we have a charge here, and we will fulfill it. Why rebuilding the temple now? Because a site has presented itself. Lindis has repaid cruelty with cruelty, as is his way. As it should be. Precisely. This was the home of a well-known arsonist. Fortunately, he managed to set it on fire in his most recent attempt. Burned the whole thing to the ground with himself inside. I can think of no better site for a temple of justice than one where justice has been served. Nickel nod. Um... Looking at the at the at the poster, you said there's just a face of a golden dragon. It, the on same it. one who was at the uh, who was kind of talking at the uh, talking at the in the uh, marketplace, the one who had been handing out the flyers. Yeah. Well, my my family has served Lendis for generations. Back when dragons were still around, even, uh, they they served as judge, jury, and executioner for uh, a dragon and his and his ta a town that had formed around his horde. I'd be happy to help in the reconstruction efforts. I see. We would be glad to have you. He gives you another once-over, and, uh, puts a hand on your shoulder. Come on. You can get started with laying some of the mason work. Any experience in that? Not particularly. It's not super, it's not all too hard. Lay some whatever that gunk is, and put a stone on top of it. Make sure it's one that fits. Make sure it looks somewhat decent. Once you get it in place, we'll have someone pretty it up. You'll be paid, of course. Very well. And I'll help, I guess. Not All really right. sure what type of roll laying bricks is. Laying bricks is not going to be a roll at all. It's if you want to do anything else while you're doing this. If you're just going to lay the bricks for the time, then you don't need to make a roll. If you're just going to spend your day doing that, collect a paycheck. Um, I don't really have any other questions for these guys. Yeah. Most of them are in some form of armor, or very least what would be the uh, not so the full plate, but like the pieces under it. 
and then the plates sort of lying off to the side. It is all of it either very fine steel or the leader is in mithril armor. Yeah, if you just want to collect the paycheck, that's perfectly fine. Just let me know if that changes and there's anything else you want to do. I'm going to go with no. All right. In that case, that's what Annie's going to be doing with for the rest of the day. Sapphire. Yes. What time do you wake up? Uh, Probably 10-ish, 10.30 which is sleeping in for her considering that goddamn cannon shoots at like what 7 every morning. Yeah. Pretty much. Where's Jasper? Is he already working or is he also still asleep? Uh so Jasper is not Currently here, he currently has a sign put up. Basically, he is out working on a private commission. Huh. Why does he tell me these things? I look for a note from him. Uh, there is indeed a note. Okay, good. <laughs> I read the note. Or is it just him saying, hey, private commission? Yeah, essentially, essentially it's that. There's some more details in there, but... Uh, okay. Yeah. In that case, I guess I should go out and get myself some supplies, because I only have five for a day's rations. Okay. And last in two weeks, one way, and won't be fun with five days of rations. Yeah, most likely not. And I assume I know where a good place to get decent rations for cheap are. Because Definitely. I've lived in Waterdeep for a while. Definitely. The cheapest so place to get rations that will actually service for the road is definitely going to be around the Adventurers Guild. They definitely mm -hmm. have the best prices for that sort of thing. But it is fairly limited to nuts, berries, and dried jerky. Eh, I'll live. As well as some, you know, hard tack. Very hard, crusty bread that will just keep and keep. That's fine. Not tasty, but it's edible mm -hmm. and... Filling. Filling, yeah. Yeah, it's doable. She'll manage with that. I assume I have to bob and weave because we slept in Guild and Glamour that night. Through the yeah, crowd. Uh, through the preacher himself. Yeah, the, the golden dragonborn. Come, help rebuild the temple of Lendis. Though the gods of the dragons no longer speak, we may still do hey, their bidding. Hey, hey shut, shut up. Yes. Is his slogan, Lendis your aid? Oh my god. Oh god. I feel like it wasn't was before, bad. but it is now. Boo. Boo. I'm very is tempted, it? but no. Boo. <laughs> He's, uh, you can tell he's definitely more so talking to the Dragonborn. They seem to be mm -hmm. more receptive than most of the others. Yeah. Most other people are kind of just giving him, like, a passing glance, but, uh... Cool, so he's ignoring me. Are, are giving it. Just, yeah, no, he doesn't seem to pay much attention to you. Mm-hmm. A few of the merchants seem to be getting a kick out of him doing his thing. There are a few guards around, but they're not pestering him, nor is he giving them reason to. You seem to just be here, you know, just to make sure that it's a religious thing. There's a lot of gods. They don't yeah. want a, a brawl breaking out. Yeah. No, I understand that. But yes, going to see how much uh, a decent amount of rations would be. Yes, at the Adventurers Guild in mm -hmm. that general area. There are a few places to pick it up. There's one place that's a little bit more of they advertise more the nuts and berries type thing. 
It's a wooden building that's very overgrown with ivy. You have a feeling that at this point the ivy might be what holds it together more than the wood. Uh, there is also there is also a sort of gnarled branch sticking out of it. Uh, as you look more, it looks like this thing might be built around a singular tree. Uh, you can take a pretty good guess as to what type of place it is based off of that. Yeah. But it uh, has a very simple wooden sign painted in kind of sloppy uh, penmanship. Furs, not furs. <laughs> what a name! <laughs> and spelled F I R apostrophe S, not F. U R S. I love it. <laughs> yeah, there's a very simple little wooden door that uh, doesn't quite fully seal it when it's locked up that leads inside. There's also uh, a butcher shop. I guess I'm protein with my rations. Yeah, which doesn't have a name. It's just very obviously that's what it is based off of the Mm -hmm. Uh, large image of a pig with X's over its eyes and a uh, cleaver in its back. Oh. In front of it. So graphic, jeez. There's there's no blood to its credit. There's just the cleaver, the X's on the pig, and the pig sticking its tongue out. Very there's perfect. no apple. There's no apple. In there the is pig no part. apple. That's sad. Apples are a luxury food, woman. <laughs> Not wrong. That's fair. And the last place has probably the simplest sign of them all. It is a... This is probably the smallest one. Mm-hmm. As a... The door... The building itself is made twice the width of the door. So it is two-story. And okay. it has a simple sign in the window and out front sitting on the street that simply says, Ale, with two exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit early for that, I think. Oh, come on. It's five o'clock somewhere. If you go over to the board, it has a few more listings. Specializing in traveling varieties, uh, alcohol to clean the wound, and uh, that, and uh, strong enough so that it won't spoil. I'm also sorry, vinegar alcohol... for discounted price. Alcohol strong enough it won't spoil. Or is it food it strong says. enough? It that's what it says. It's that's the, the varieties it has listed under the exclamation of ale. And I can for sure get rations here. Yeah, I mean there's a few places you can do that. This is just the ale place. <laughs> These other three look like they sell something food related for like traveling purposes. Okay. I think I'm gonna go to the tree. Okay. You're gonna go to furs, not furs. Yes. So you go over there and open it. Mm-hmm. And with a little uh Hopefully the door doesn't break. There's not there's not a jingling chime. But there is the clattering of like wooden, of like uh, wooden chimes as you open it. Mm -hmm. You from the back. Uh, just a minute. All right. And after Close, a moment, closing the door uh, behind me, you hear step, clop, step, clop, step, clop as a yes. little as a fur bulk, uh hobbles out from the back. <laughs> uh, yeah. What can I do for you? I was looking to buy some rations. I'm planning a trip soon. Rations? What kind are you looking for? We got some nuts, we got some good berries. Uh, dried berries are always very good to bring on the road. Uh, something that'll last a few weeks. Hmm. Just a few weeks? Uh, definitely gonna be the nuts. Uh, maybe some raisins. Uh, dried red grapes, those are. Uh, very good. Good for your heart. Help lower cholesterol, whatever that is. 
Sapphire's just okay. nodding enthusiastically, like, yeah. Right. Sell them by the pound. Uh, Out of character, how uh, many days worth would that be, then? That's a very good question. One that you will have to ask him. <laughs> and how many pounds is a day's worth of rations? Uh, for one person. Mm -hmm. Well, my experience, I can get about two days out of a pound. But I don't need a lot. So you might get different results. I don't you charge cut. much for them, though. You, you cut out for me. I heard two. That works out for me. From my experience, I uh, said from my experience, I can get about... I can get about two days out of a pound. Okay. But I also don't eat much. So it might work out different for you. Okay. They're all cheap, though. Only one silver for a pound. Grow them right here myself. Up on the roof. He seems very proud of that. I mean... Sure. <laughs> um, and he said one, it's basically one to one. Mm hmm. One silver for one pound. Thank you for following. I'll get nine, just so I don't have any nine silver. Pounds for nuts and berries? Mm hmm. Okay. He happily hobbles away, and you hear a step clop, step clop, as he comes out from around the counter and, uh, Goes over one of the pipes. He has a wooden peg leg. That's where the clock mm -hmm. comes from. And he goes over to one of the pipes, looks up it, and uh, holds out a little, uh, like, leather, like, burlap sack. And hits the pipe once, and a bunch of nuts and berries spill down the pipe and into the sack. He repeats this, nine, this uh, procedure nine times. This reminds me of Bug's Life. I love it. <laughs> He uh he doesn't put them down on the ground. He kind of has them all like somehow balanced in his arms. Keep in mind this is nine pounds of like nuts and berries. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Alright. So these are about a pound each. I don't really measure exactly. But this is about the size I get for one of them. Thank you. You're most welcome. Now that I could be of some help to you. Yes. Uh, good luck on your adventure. Much appreciated. Thank you. Oh, and do your best to stay away from the meats. The meats aren't good for you. That's what me mama told me. Oh, I'm sure to keep that in mind. Naturally, ma'am. Have a good day. You have a good day. And he tips his little hat uh, that he has on his head. Uh, there's a hole in the top of it. You can very clearly see. Mm -hmm. oh, As in, there is no top. And then he uh, he then wipes his nose on his uh, apron. Mm -hmm. As you I, leave. I, and I, he doesn't mm -hmm. think that you notice him, but you do. Mm -hmm. I, I will leave, closing the door behind me, because I don't think that door automatically closes. Sort of does, sort of doesn't. Cool. I maybe have 18 days question mark worth of food now. Top of my so five days practice, rations. It's going to work out to each of those is one day's worth of rations. Cool. I bought a good amount. <laughs> the perfect amount for two full weeks. <laughs> Are there any of the other places you wanted to take a look at? Um, If I could maybe get some jerky, that'd be good. Okay. So you go over like to the uh, the butcher shop. Mm -hmm. As you get to the door, you can hear a loud slam of a knife over and over and over in a very rhythmic uh, percussion. Mm -hmm. Do you choose to open the door, or does that? Yes. Okay. I go. Through, I go in you the, door. the door. As soon as you open, there's a little. There's a little ding of a bell mm -hmm. and uh the cutting stops what you want 
I was looking to purchase some jerky. You want jerky? And a, a, a full, a giant full-blooded orc pops his head out from around there. Oh, Lord. Uh, with one oh, huge oversized snaggle tooth sticking out. <laughs> what types of jerky you want? What types of jerky you got? I got all types of jerky. I just got to know what you want. I'm trying to think of what the cheapest jerky might be. He uh he looks over and he is out of character rope, me picking up. Okay. Oh, which uh the rope uh has a, a board, uh like some several boards sort of clatter down that has his listings of prices. Uh listing everything yeah, from uh yes it actually is. Yeah, rat joke is cheapest. Everyone knows this. Yep. You have a hunter in your party, you never ask him about meat. <laughs> Yeah, rat, he is in fact correct. Rat jerky is the cheapest. Uh, one step up is lizard, then chicken, then several other types of poultry, including chicken, duck. He then gets into slightly larger things. Um, for some reason, he has cat on there. Um, that has been very hastily <laughs> scourged out. Chicken of the alley. <laughs> he also uh, goes, walks over, rolls down a li another rope, and uh, another uh, board lowers that says, Daily Special Kangaroo. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, Out of yeah. curiosity, how much is the kangaroo that. jerky? Ten gold for a serving. And a serving is a day's worth, right? A serving is a day's worth of rations, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not gonna go with the kangaroo. Holy shit. I'll go with the chicken. The chicken itself is going to be uh, one silver a serving a day, just like the uh, the pigeons. Okay. I'll go with five. Okay. He, uh, very pleased with himself, walks to the back very quickly, and comes back out with, like, three... They're just strips of meat that have been dried mm -hmm. and then he has wrapped them each with a single like uh butcher's twang cord with a bow and he has five of them which he slams down on the counter there you go five servings of chicken thank you slams down the five silver for him <laughs> don't mention it man he snaps it up and uh Walks around from behind the counter. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. And he claps you on the back so hard it nearly knocks you over. Oh. <laughs> Gives him a thumbs up because I feel like I probably can't breathe. He smiles. His snackle tooth wiggles a little bit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then I'll take my jerky and I'll head off. He closed the door, and after a few moments, you hear the rhythmic slam, slam, slam of the cleaver again. Mm hmm mm hmm Oh. Um, if at all possible, I'll put this carefully in my bag that I've... Yes, I carry. yes, doable, yes. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'll head back to my home and, you know, get ready to pack for, you know, the two-week journey. Okay. Which, if I recall correctly, is quite the long journey. So who knows what'll happen? All right. It's like let's well, let's get back to you. Yes, I've been patiently waiting for the past hour. Yes, I am very much aware. So the results of your forging for the day. It's taken you a good while to do this, and you feel like you're doing pretty good on this. Uh, you know, you're doing okay. You're making something that's going to work. And at one po point, you are... You think you almost sort of overdo it, but the dwarf himself is able to sort of pull back the... Uh, 
sort of pull back the flames and save it so that you're so that it hardens a bit quicker and doesn't malform like you think it's going to. He's, to his credit, very very good at what he does. Uh, the only exception being him accidentally setting his own beard on fire at one point. <laughs> He doesn't seem to react. He simply walks over to the uh, quenching pool very calmly and dunks his whole face in it. I'm really glad he uses water and not oil for quenching. <laughs> yes. I feel like yeah, this has happened say. several times with him. Judging by how calm he is and how tattered his beard looks, you can assume that this is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> Nor will it be the last. Translation, he did roll a nat one helping you forge this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> However, uh, between his other role and your roles, it is able to come out looking fairly decent. You have an effective suit of armor for Inic. Oh. Wow, a day ahead of schedule. Or at the very least, the start of it. Yeah. It's, it's, we, we probably got like, because it was only a curious, we probably got like one, one, one of the, oh God, it's not, the pauldron's the shoulder piece. I can't remember what the yeah, yeah, yeah. sleeve is called. I know there's oh, gauntlet. Yeah, I, what the, what is the upper arm called? Upper arm bit. <laughs> yeah, because there's the gauntlets, which are the lower arm. The pauldron's shoulder. Pauldrons pauldrons are the shoulder, right? but what's the, no. Uh, gauntlet slash bracer is the excuse is... the jam as he yeah, goes. No, to Google. <laughs> yes, going to Google. I guess yeah, it's really just please? a sleeve. I, I, it's probably just called a sleeve. Re brace, oh. apparently. A reeve. Okay. R e r e brace. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. A re brace. Okay. Please has been uh, yeah, okay. just um, speaking in druidic. To, to her dancing tactics. To the, yeah, to the dancing cactus. And her friend, yeah. Your friend dances alongside the cactus and uh, at one point entices you to read entices you to touch it. The cactus wards you away from doing so. She wants to touch it anyway. The table yeah, lady is not, to not a true plan. What? I said the I table lady. <laughs> okay. I said the two of them get into an argument after they disagree. Jeez, you think for me as thrown. As soon as you say that though, they both look dejected and give each other a hug. Good. I love both of you equally. Now kiss the cactus. Please tell me Jesus is gonna try and take the cactus. <laughs> she she, she kinda wants to. <laughs> she definitely wants to. Can I take the cactus? No. The cactus is quite literally uh Part of the floor, the pot is forged into it. Oh my god! <laughs> Evidently, he's used to druids. Twenty minutes. She spends a good twenty minutes trying. The dwarf uh, doesn't seem concerned. I, I want to do point, it. He comes over with a little, uh, like perfume sprayer, and mists the cactus. I want it. The dwarf oh, looks over that. at you. Hey. Oh, can I... You care can for I some try? plants of your own, do you? Yes. I live hey. in a forest. I like that. Hey. Or I stayed right for this here little fella. And he takes his armor gauntlet and very gently pats the cactus on the head. Well, on the top of it. Cheese goes to pet the cactus again. Cheese comes away with several thorns, but does not notice them. Oh, and she like the dwarf does and kind of gives her a weird hand. look, but uh, Cheese closes her hand, completely not noticing. Yeah, the dwarf grimaces, but uh, just after a moment, shrugs it off. Oh, Maybe this is a fake creature it. thing. He's not privy to. Lady Silverstone, am I allowed to get one? I want to go and get one. I want to go. Can I go now? Please? From behind she is the dwarf gives you a what the f look. 
She ate a mushroom yesterday. Uh, he takes a few steps away from she. <laughs> You're correct to do that. I am very volatile. Just cautiously glances over at Lesla, back to Cheese, and from a distance resumes misting the cactus. <laughs> uh, Cheese will probably at one point see something else and try to walk away again. Um, sure, go, go ahead and roll. <laughs> You will have stealth assuming, advantage, yes. Disadvantage? Okay. I, yeah. I I was pretty sure that I would. Ah, yes, that one. Yeah, no, <laughs> everyone sees you. He just starts walking out again. Go, what goes through, through the, the floorboards? Uh, I have to check something, actually, real quick. Oh, lordy. For a nat one, uh... Rec, yes. you wouldn't have to know off the top of your head what the DC for Cloud's Venom is. Oh, uh, God. It's DC 11. DC 11. Okay, cheese roll a con save. Oh, God. Oh, wait, wouldn't it be at disadvantage? Yes. No, it's only attack rolls. Poison. No, it's only attack rolls and ability checks. Is it? I thought, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, not for steering throws. Points. That is exactly uh, 11. Let me, so she's uh, not paralyzed. I, I did just say that off the top of my head because I know that's what the dog with what, like, the Mastiff's DC save is? Let me just double-check oh, it. Okay. Oh, it, yeah, it could be based off of that. Uh, the Sting is, yeah, DC 11. Okay. You're lucky. If you fail that DC by five or more, you just go unconscious. So, yeah. Klaus just built, bit me? Klaus stung, stung you. Stinger. Yeah. Stung me. He has a stinger on his tail. Yeah, Pseudo Dragons have a stinger. A prick. Like a scorpion yeah. stinger. That was rude. Lesla, your friend... Sorry, Lady Silverster, your friend is mean to me. I turn Cloud over. Is... Cloud is sitting on her on her shoulder, looking very pleased with himself. Less, uh, she is... What you see is a very odd red blob of glue that uh, looks to be doing the limbo. Cloud blob is rude. Cloud looks insulted. I Cla do not like. Cloud, what did you? Why did you sting her? Uh, from the loose, uh, uh, from the loose stream of thoughts you're able to piece together, she was trying to run away. I was getting tired of that. Figured if I stung her, she'd she'd stop. Didn't work. Miss Cheese, if you'd be so kind as to sit down, it seems that Cloth just wants to, wants you to stay and accompany him. Oh, well, I'm bored, and I saw a pretty thing. Well, I've been sitting here all day. Play patty cake with the table leg. No. I don't know what that is. She doesn't. Yeah. Cloud looks very down with this. Well, I I agree, Cloud. <sighs> Cheese just sits on the floor and pouts and continuously uses druidcraft to make flowers and then throws them at Cloud. Cloud, uh, for his part, begins gnawing on one of them. It's better than anything else he could be doing. You're mean. I do not like you. Oh, that's just... Uh, let's let you see Klaus flick his tongue out at cheese. Now both of you be nice to each other, or... Well, I won't Ooh, brush your... Me. I won't brush either of you. He doesn't have hair. Cloud still looks rather upset at the prospect. Doesn't have hair. Do you want your do you want your hair to get all tangled into your fur again? My hair's not that long. 
Remember the last time that you... Remember the last time that it was unkempt. The process my to... Why was it stuck in the fur of my leg? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Have you measured it lately? She just holds out her arm with a strand of her hair. It's that long! What does she see? <laughs> Uh, she, uh, Cheese currently sees the hair as being very, very short. Uh, Cheese isn't sure when she got a pixie cut. <laughs> but she does seem to have one. It looks kind of nice. You didn't know there was a mirror here. There is not a mirror here. Lady Silverstone, do you like the short hair? I think I'm partial to it. I think that short hair is only truly useful in a setting where conflict is more than inevitable, generally speaking, a battlefield. Personally speaking, since it is likely that we will see combat if you wish to keep your hair short, I wouldn't mind doing it up for you. After all, there is a certain amount of elegance that having long hair uh, pertains to, and elegance is something that, well, you can never have enough of. Cheese, when she turns around in the mirror with her short hair, does she see her tattoo? In the uh, high mirror that is not no, in uh, No, you do not. What you do see is you see a pair of dancing centipedes. Oh! They are oh, belly dancing. No. Oh no! I want to keep my long hair! No, no, no! <laughs> Jeez looks very distraught. The centipedes look dejected. Why did Lady you give... Silverstone, give me back my- Why did you give this ball of chaos a chaos drug? Look, look, I just wanted them to identify it. I wasn't expecting Cheese to just eat half of it in one go. It's cheese. You- how? Sapphire has you not known cheese for mushrooms long. Sometimes by eating them, that's just how it goes. Yes, oh, that is. Cheese has done before. <laughs> that's how cheese learns. Uh, okay. Uh, what has she learned from this experience? Eating Very mushrooms bad. leads to a really Absolutely fun time. <laughs> eating again, mushrooms can lead for a fun time. I, again, it's a good thing I have the other half, and I'm not. I'm gonna just gaslight cheese and be like, "No, you ate the cheese whole thing." Cheese half. Cheese ate like a single piece. Yeah, I'm Jesus going to gaslight Cheese life. into believing she had the whole thing. Why? No, but Cheese Cheese now looks like legitimately distraught at the fact that she has seen the set of beads on her back, and is now like sitting. She sat back down, and she's holding her herself very close to herself with her table leg and her druid staff. Yeah, to, to describe them, if you've seen uh, Moana, you know the little tattoo. Mm -hmm. That's what the centipedes are. Oh. Cheese doesn't like centipedes anymore. Understandable. I used to think centipedes were my friend. They look better now. Until one of them almost killed me. It bit you. It had no intention of killing you. It wanted to eat you first. Lady Silverster, I want to go home. I think on that note, we're going to cut back over to Corvus. Oh. It's very sad. Sad cheese noises in the background. Bad trip cheese noises in the background. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Did you have the worst trip spotter? I'm. <laughs> yeah. I'm going back to, uh, to forging. Yeah. Yeah. Because you forge from morning to night. Yeah. So, Corvus. Yeah. You're heading back. Yes. And you managed to notice there's a path you didn't quite head down before. And you notice there's a lot of cats down this path. It's sort of nearby the adventurer's guild. It's just off down the side. Yeah. There are a lot. I mean a lot of uh, cats. Uh, I thought I missed this. Um uh, like the conversation uh, I had earlier, just not too long ago, but just like pretty much the conversation. 
Uh, but it takes like an hour to move to the city, like an hour or two to get back here. Yeah. Um, I look at the thing, think back to what Calico said, and there's there's two things. It's like the one is like, do we really need to the do we need to do this? And the other one is, you've had a day. This could be entertaining. Besides, you're leaving tomorrow. If anything goes wrong, you're outside. Uh, so I'll like, oh, I'll just like veer towards the alleyway and just start walking, dodging all the cats, trying not to step on any of them, and making sure that Drake doesn't eat any of them. No. Okay. The Drake is fairly well behaved and does not eat any of the cats. He actually seems to regard them with a bit of respect, which is odd for him. Yeah, he's been weird since he's been in the city. It does bad things to his mind, apparently. No. <clears throat> we'll be in a forest again soon. <laughs> but uh, down this, you see one building that is very clearly not a warehouse. The others all being as such. In this building, says Felis and Felis Cat's Tail Tavern. Felis and Felis? That's both. Mm -hmm. Here, sp I will get the spelling for you. Thank you, because I was like, oh, fuck. Yep. Words. Spelled. Like one weakness. F. E L I S. F E L I S and Felis, just the same thing. Mm -hmm. Exact same spelling. Uh, tavern, did you say? Cat's Tail Tavern. Tail as in story or tails in tail? Tail as in uh, story. <laughs> Sorry. Kind of looks and goes, all right, that. Seems appropriate with all the cats and the. Uh, uh, one cat walks in under sort of the. It has those like uh, swing open western saloon doors on the front. Oh, okay. A cat walks in okay. underneath it. Alright, I will. Why not? Come this far. I'll walk in. Yeah, walking in, this is a fairly quiet uh, place for a tavern, mostly because about half of it is taken up by card tables. Damn. The other half has a bar and several tables at which patrons are rather quietly drinking. There are cats on everything. You just went to a cat cafe. Yeah, I definitely went to a cat cafe. That's pretty accurate. There are a whole lot of them. Uh, sitting right in front of you is a uh, uh, a sort of uh, eh, s sort of I'm trying to think. Scraggly looking. That's the word. Uh, orange tabby cat. It just looks at you and meows. And then walks away towards one of the tables, hops up and sits in the middle of it. And looks at you again. Can I insight this cat to see if it wants me to go to that table, or is it? It's pretty obvious that is what the cat is doing. Yes. I'll go to the table then. Just the most. Like, come on, like this is the most surreal thing that's ever happened in his life. <clears throat> You sit down and the cat, uh, well, as soon as you do, the cat hops off and trots off behind the bar. Uh, and a few moments later, a gentleman walks out of the back. He's wearing a very, very a very, like, loose, uh, sort of, what's it, if you've seen, like, the pirate undershirt, mm. sort of stuff. They billowy that. and loose. Yeah. Yes, he's wearing, he's wearing that. A uh, very low cut collar uh, tied together loosely with some uh, leather laces. He gives you a smile and a nod and 
comes and sits down opposite from you at the table and puts his feet up on it. You know, my friend told me that she had some good fun with you today. So it would say... She said she'd be coming round. I see she was right. She's rarely wrong. I'm Lynx, by the way. Yeah, holds out a hand. Lynx, L Y N X. Yeah, spits on his hand, cleans off the dirt on it, because he hasn't bathed since the referee's pile. And then he gives you a. After cleaning his hand off. He gives you a half grin, pulls his hand back, and spits in his own. Just sort of rubs it together in the one hand, flicks it off, and then gives you the shake. Is this man like human or is it just. Oh, human? yes, he's human. As far yeah. as you can tell, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I love just I adding love that little seed of doubt. How long is that? I said I love adding that little seed of doubt. Yeah. No, oh, okay. Uh, what else to say about curiosity? Damn. It might have killed the cat. But I'm a bit more than that. Well, seems you, you do know the full saying, right? Oh, I do. I've heard it far more times than I care to count. <laughs> it's a little bit old, honestly. So... What exactly is this place? Well, it's my tavern. Mine and my sisters. Felis and Felis. I'm the first Felis. Oh, she'd tell you she is. She'll be coming down in a little bit. Uh, her nightly game of... Well, I think it's go fish tonight. You're welcome to try and beat her. Yeah, I just like. run. I ain't good at card games. Well, you don't lose anything for losing. At least uh, she's given you a special offer this time. That's what she told me anyway. Normally it's 10 gold to sit, but uh, she'll play you free. She took a real liking to you. That, I'm guessing you can also do turn to a cat. Is that what I'm to assume? <laughs> I can do more than that. But, uh, holds up a finger to his lips. Keep it on the down low. See, nod. I think my chances with the ladies would be a lot harder if they learned about that. No one wants to wake up in bed with a hairball. <laughs> Not that I'd do that, but I think most of them would think I would. Shadow. Mm -hmm. Just for me. I know I'll probably not. I'm not going to roll. Mm -hmm. If I do, I'll fail it. Stories of people who can turn into cats. Yes, there's druids, obviously. But is there, like, anything else that was, like, Roll me either Arcana or Religion. This is going to be a very, very hard check. Is it going to be a... Good luck or hurt. Is it going to be more than 23? It wouldn't be. 
then I cannot succeed. Okay. Darn. Oh, I am not super intelligent. I'm just a little bit above that. No, it's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fucking stupid, oh, so it's okay. <laughs> As for uh, the current situation, uh, getting getting back on track, mm -hmm. Link's uh, scratches uh, scratches behind his ear a little bit and <laughs> looks up at uh, look looks up towards the uh, the second story. She ought to come out soon if you're looking to play her in a game. She is she looking the same price she always does. If you win. Only one's ever won though. Doubt I will. You know, most men would have asked for what the price was at this point. He ain't said a word. Shrugs. What's the point in asking the price when you know you're gonna lose? You don't have much confidence. So you get your yeah. hopes. I have a particular skill set, and it is not cards. Just learn not to trust your eyes. He gives you a wink, stands up, walks back behind the counter. Like, just like this morning, like, I think it's like this. <sighs> Again, that thought of, I've come this far. After a little while, uh, a few more people do start to gather in the tavern towards the, uh, there's one specific table. That is left wide open. And there's a lot of people gathering around, seemingly waiting to sit at that table. After a while, uh, you hear a door open upstairs. And after a moment, a woman with sort of darker, well-tanned skin and long hair, dressed very similarly to uh, how Lynx was, makes her way slowly down the stairs. And as uh, she catches uh, sight of you, gives you a wink and a grin. I give her a nod. She makes her way over and uh, sits down at the table. You boys are going to have to wait. I promised a private game. And she uh, turns and... Yep. Yeah. And makes eyes, it makes direct eye contact with you, Corvus. Uh, lifts himself from his seat, and is he getting any weird stink eye from the other people around the table? Not so much stink eye, more amazement. And uh, there's one guy who looks over at you and gives you a, like a, like a, oh, like a. Oh, what's a good way? What's a good way to put it? Uh, you you know the like if you know like in the movies the, where the wingman gives his buddy the thumbs up after he gets the girl. <laughs> That's what this dude's doing. The, the narrowing of the eyes. But moves over to the table. The drape not far from his heels. Slides out the chair. Sits down. You ever played before? Nope. Well, let's hope you can catch around beginner's luck. And she begins to uh, shuffle the cards very, very quickly. With the skill of someone you can tell has done this more than a thousand times. Uh, one point, and... Thomas does attempt to like watch watch it but then stops because he goes like again he doesn't know yeah. 
It's she does like that for them, about. Like, some movement. She does that for about two minutes solid. And then begins dealing them out. Uh, true to uh, Lynx's word, it is a go fish. Mm. So the question becomes how do you want to try and play this? How you say you want to do it is going to describe the role, is going to depend on the role. She does let you know it will Corvus. be best two out of three. Right, well, Corvus, again, has already knows he's not going to win. So he'll play it completely straight. If she says uh, something that's in his hand, he will give it. If he says, she says something that's not, he will go, she will go fish. As for him, uh, he is a hunter and thus has some level of like decent memory, I imagine. So he's like, he more goes like he he sees he uses his cards and the fist as the pile and basically the goal for that. So if he is like, um, as so no, the, the goal is to empty your opponent's hand, right? Go fish. That's the idea. The idea is to make as many uh, complete sets of cards as you can. Yes. No, I, it's been a while since I've never played Go Fish. Uh, so this is a good, good thing. He's, he's learning to play, and it's like, yeah. I imagine he doesn't just aim randomly for cards he doesn't have. He does. Um, no, you can only call for one if you have a card. Uh, of, a pick, of a particular set? Yes. So, like, if you have an ace, you can ask if okay. they have any aces. With two people, it is a little right. bit odd. Yeah. And once you complete a set uh, of four, was... no one can ask for that set anymore. He will, he will play. It, he will play it pretty much straight, but using his, he'll more like go like he'll not ask for the cards he has the most of, because then she'll try to take his cards from him. Okay. Um, but it'll be like he's he's trying to play it using his instinct rather than like raw intelligence, because he's he's learned to rely on his instinct. Okay. Okay. Go ahead then and roll me a perception check. For this first game, <laughs> if that's how you're playing it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neg less than ten. Okay. Sure. So, cutting to the chase, you lose handily. You don't get a single pair, yeah. or, or you don't get a single set. Mm -hmm. What you do notice that's odd is there are a few times where she asks you for a card that. You're relatively certain you didn't have, but as you sort of fumble through at, at her insistence, you find one or even two of them. This happens several times. But you never quite run out of cards. As she, Whenever you get down to just that one last card left, she'll ask for one that you don't have. It's almost like she knows exactly what's there. Which, unless she, she's either really good at counting cards, or something else is going on. Mm. But you definitely know something is not right. Right. Uh, Corvus will suspect something is afoot, not fully understand it, and in that moment of like confusion, uh, I'm going to expand his senses to cast Detect Magic. Because I think you said there's one more game. One more game. Well, it's best two or three. Yes. Uh, there is an aura magic. of enchantment on the deck of cards. Which enchantment is the school of trick is is a thing that matters with the mind. Yes. Uh, if you want to look a little bit deeper into don't it. Tr don't trust your eyes. I'd like to, but again, right. like, because there's no like visual indicator he's doing this. Yeah, no, that would be an Arcana check. Alright. Is it higher than uh, 25? No, it's not nearly that high. It's actually it's actually lower than 10. Doesn't, doesn't matter, it's going to be less than 10. That's enough. Uh... It was an 8. Ah. So, what you can tell is that not only is there enchantment, but there is... Also, a little bit of transmutation in there. Uh. 
So do with that what you will. You're saying cards that I didn't have, I didn't think I had, that ended up I did have. Mm-hmm. So the second game course, still kind of playing straight, but now trying to use this new knowledge to his advantage. Uh, he's going to try and a couple. There's a couple tests. Like he'll say a card, which, like maybe he has like a pair or something, and he'll just say a card that maybe she does, maybe she doesn't have. Are you expecting to get that card? Is the question. He's expecting that if he wants the card to be in her hand, it might be in her hand. And okay. Yes. Every time you do that. She gives over the cards. And by the end of the game, you've come away winning a round. She looks very pleased. You don't win, like, fully hands down, but yeah, you, def you definitely win. You have several more sets than she does. As she takes them all and slides them together to, re to reshuffle. You know, you might be the second one to ever win. I'm looking forward to it. A few of the guy, a few of the guys around are getting very, very excited. It is mostly men who've gathered around. There's a couple women, but mostly it is yeah. men who've gathered around. And they're they're seeming to be very excited about this too. More so in awe of uh, the fact that someone actually beat her, even just once. Someone actually did it. You get a few cheers and claps on the back for doing so. One guy even buys you a drink. Of course, like, being the center of attention is just, like, almost rigid. It's just how, like, stop, stop. <laughs> it doesn't say anything, but like you can tell like, that's like he's not used to being the center of attention, let alone positive attention. Mm-hmm. So she deals out the cards again, each of you having one win in this best two out of three. And this time, she comes right out of the gate to be, uh, well, no, she deals, so it would be you who asks first. Realizing that she's probably realized that he's realized the game, he keeps his approach, but this time, whenever she says a card, he just really wishes that it's not in the... In the in okay. His On top of it, as well. So it's okay. normal strategy, but also applying this principle. Romeo will save. Like... Oh, Jesus. Ain't no way I'm beating her. Yep. Ooh. Uh, actually... I will give you advantage on that. Considering what you considering your previous roles. Double natural one. Okay. Good. Good thing you got that. Yeah. She asked for the first one. You can and you're able to tell her to go fish. As you don't have that card. She actually seems kind of surprised by that. And this time, you win very handily. She does not get a single set. And everyone's jaws are on the floor, except hers. She has the biggest Cheshire grin you have ever seen. Now, 
I think you earned it a lot more than the last one. Sorry, everyone. No more for tonight. We've got a winner. She stands up and uh, makes her way over to over to you and uh, holds a hand out to pull you up from the chair. Stands up of his own volition, shakes it, holds his hand up, and shakes hers. She accepts it. Now, did you ever okay. hear what the prize was for this game? Ask. Well, price is me. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Corvus got bitches. <laughs> I called it at fucking eight thirty eight. <laughs> Four of us got bitches. I'm pretty sure. At least I knew what this was a while ago. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Corvus yeah. got bitches. So did I. So did I. Corvus, Corvus also suspected, um, but didn't fully anticipate. Well. Mm -hmm. She's waiting for a response from you. But not really uh, into things like that. Oh, a real shame. I just met. I just met you today. I see. Well. I'm not going to deny you a prize. And seeing as you don't want that sort of one, I can offer you my service, if you're okay with it. This is an eyebrow. Well, you took a commission looking for a cat, didn't you? You're going to take another soon, ain't you? Well, I'd be glad to join you. <clears throat> Don't tell me what you're going to deny me that? that. What do you mean by that? I mean, I'll join you, and I'll give you a hand. You don't think I mean anything malicious now, do you? I'm not that type of girl. Just looks, just looks down. He's still covered in, because he has not cleaned at all. He's still <laughs> filthy. Like, no, I don't think you're malicious. Forest Jesus is Forest Jesus. Then is it a deal? This is a smooth contemplation. Could be useful. But... She smiles. Tomorrow. She smiles, uh, reaches out her hand to shake yours. I'll reach out again. She pulls herself in and very quickly kisses you on the cheek before stepping back. No. All right. Well, she is she is disgusting dirt and grime on her lips. <laughs> she doesn't seem to care. Hmm. You know, I think I'm going to start the protocol of prestidigitating Corvus every time I see him. Yeah. <laughs> nope. 
<laughs> no. He's just gonna rub dirt on himself again. Eventually, Light he'll get tired of rubbing dirt on himself. Or he'll get tired of rubbing dirt on himself. You underestimate how stubborn Ruford can be. You underestimate Jeez how... He also has forget, Christian Col Regardless. Forget, don't forget, Corvus doesn't actively seek the dirt out. It finds him. You... Regardless. She pulls away. Giving you the same... The same wry look you've sort of come to know her having the entire time. Okay. Then I'll be seeing you. Won't I? Not. Sorry, boys. No more games for a while. You're gonna have to amuse yourself in some other way. <laughs> she just makes a shooing motion with her hand towards the rest of the, the crowd that have gathered. Uh, a few of whom pat you on the back as you're leaving. A few others who give you dirty looks. Oh, if you change your mind, oh, they look away immediately when you do that. And uh, in case you change your mind, you know where to find me. I'll be seeing you around. You know who to ask for, don't you? No. Good. And I don't believe I ever got your name. It is Paul. Oh, it very much is. You don't just let a lady tell her your name and don't give yours in return. You think gentlemen like I never made you tell me your name. I suppose it's true. I didn't think you'd be so rude about telling me yours. This is not important. I can't say I agree with you, but I respect it. Uh, in your head, have a good night, Corvus. She winks at you and walks back up the stairs. And I suppose in her head, I'll whisper, you as well, man. She stops midway through a step. And Gorbis has just already turned and started walking towards the mm -hmm. bar. He needs a drink. <clears throat> All right. That's where I'll call the session for tonight. Yo. All right, and with that, we will call it there. As always, have a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for today. For those of you watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, ring the notification bell to get more content like this in the future. Until next time.